must also remember, there is no individual stronger than the collective. The ties that bind you together make you stronger than you are alone. Welcome to the Pixel Pop Movie Podcast. I'm your host, number one, Toby. Join with me this fortnight, I have number two, Ethan. I want to be seven. And, well, but number seven's not special. I was going to give that to Lucas. But okay, we'll have uh, the number five, Lucas, who travels in time. Okay, hold on. Just, can, we just, can we just back up a second? You were going to give me number seven because it's not special. <laughs> right, and then I realized it's much more appropriate for Jesse, who's not here again. <laughs> what a prick. <laughs> right? Sick and, burn. And not joined by number seven, and Jesse. not joined by yeah. number seven, <laughs> Jesse. Exactly. <laughs> Um, so in case you didn't guess by the quote and our introduction there, uh, we will be talking a little bit about, uh, the Umbrella Academy that's just released on Netflix. It will be spoiler free, so you don't have to worry about that. I think I'm the only one here that's seen the whole thing, but we've got some little bit of stuff to chat about. Should be interesting. A topic for conversation this fortnight is a pretty controversial one. And that is, have we reached a point, uh, in film and TV where we've, uh, got oversaturation with superhero slash comic book films? Uh, I think that's going to be interesting. Probably get a little bit heated, but that's cool. Uh, that's that's part of the fun. Before we dive into any of that, though, we've still got a bunch of news to get through. Please take us away, Ethan. Our first bit of news is Zac Efron's movie, the Ted Bundy drama movie, are extremely wicked, vile, uh, extremely wicked, shockingly evil and vile about Ted Bundy. Netflix has purchased it for $9 million exclusively. Isn't- this is massive. Yeah, now, this, this is, is big. interesting um, too because they already have the TV series as well, don't they? Yeah, they do. Yeah, right. so they're obviously p- p- um, capitalizing on the f- on the back of the Ted Bundy tapes mm. um, series that they have. But this is a huge get because like this has been getting heavily promoted already. Um, so if they've got the exclusive rights, like there's no doubt that they're probably going to do what they're going to do with like Triple Frontier and all those other movies where and Roma, where they drop it in the cinema for like a week or two and then it just goes straight to Netflix. Uh, next, we have Kevin Feige will take over the X Men, which really yeah, knew was bet, pretty much going to happen. Well. <laughs> Wasn't yeah. there a quote um, somewhere or a tweet that he was like literally got like a room and a crew on standby and he's just waiting yeah. for the phone call? Wasn't there something to that effect yeah. that came out yeah. of Yeah, yeah. I think something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember the exact quote, but it was yeah. like, yeah, he's just waiting for the phone call and he's yeah. going to start implementing all the X Men stuff be throughout the MCU. Beyond disbelief if you told me that he hadn't already been planning and, and had people writing stuff for the last he's, six he's, months yeah he's well probably not he probably hasn't got people writing because he technically still can't be unless he's doing the slide yeah but there's but nothing, no doubt he's got there's some, nothing like, illegal about method. fleshing out yeah. a script like there's there would be nothing it's not like i i mean i can go and write an avengers script it doesn't mean it's ever yeah. happened you know, i reckon there would be some some there would have been some brainstorming happening at the very least oh definitely yeah. He's probably got a notebook somewhere with like everything he wants to do and all this sort of shit with sure, it. Sure, for sure. That, that's good though. We kind of expected it, but it's yeah. nice to know that it's sort of more official, I guess. Yeah. My, my take on um, that was in news that surprises no one. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Next, we have Party of Five reboot gets a series order at Freeform for yeah. some reason. No one knows why. This is, if, but... No, it's. What worries me is. You know, if you if you create a film that is politically charged, I, I, I mean, that's f- that's fine, especially if you're sort of trying to base like if you if you're creating a documentary, for instance, or based on real life events, I, I can I can you know I can kind of understand that this is they're rebooting it to be about a Mexican family whose parents get sent back across the border, and so the children are left in America to fend for themselves. So it's a substantial shift Deviation. from the original story. I look. I'm getting that this is, I think this is kind of trying to be a dig at the current clinic, uh, political climate over there. And I guess there's nothing wrong with people wanting to voice an opinion and object, and, and so they should. But I just, it shouldn't be the sole core of your show. Punisher can touch on gun control, right? Because then it's sort of got that political element in it, but it's not its driving focus. Whereas this is, is, I think, going to be a show whose driving focus is... The deportation, at, yeah. And you're going to put, I mean, while a lot of people obviously, you know, are going to agree, it's also going to put a lot of people off that even if they agree, they just don't want to watch that. All right. Next, we have, we're up to some trailers now. We had a trailer for the TV show, What We Do in the Shadows, an American spinoff of the movie. So, okay. I got strong feelings on this because I loved the first movie. Like, I just loved the movie. It was amazing. I, I, I can I can appreciate the fact that Tyke is behind it. I love Matt Berry, but the trailer was flat as <laughs> fuck. 
Jury's out. I guess we'll wait and see more trailers, and then hopefully we get a few episodes. Well, and March definitely. Episodes I'm gonna. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna wait. wait then. I'm gonna watch a few episodes before I obviously make my mind up. Yeah, for sure. And this I is something like that it's... I Sorry, hold yeah. very closely. Hold very closely to my heart. Yeah, is that think... is that original movie? I think it'll air on Foxtel here for us as well. For, uh, if it's that Jimmy goes straight to Foxtel. Yeah, no doubt. So it should be there. All right, next we had a trailer for Shaft. Oh, yes. Well, those who know this could take it away because I have no idea. Oh, look, I'll give this one all to Lucas. Oh, man. So Shaft is like legendary. And they're doing this weird thing where like, I didn't actually realize this. I knew that there was a Shaft movie coming, but I didn't know much about it. Like I, I just because I hadn't paid attention. But basically, you've got three like versions of Shaft, and I'm, as far as I'm aware, they were never canonically linked until this trailer came out. And you've got Richard Roundtree, who's the original Shaft from the '70s, um, as like Papa Shaft. Um, Samuel L. Jackson, who was the Shaft in the '90s, uh, he only had one movie, but it's regarded as one of the best takes on Shaft ever. Uh, and then you have this new guy, Jesse Usher, who's playing John Shaft the third, and they've actually canonically linked them so that Richard Rancher is grandpa um, and John Shaft the third, which is Jesse Usher, will be his grandson. And then his dad is Samuel L. Jackson. So, but the trailer for it looks nuts. Like, I don't know if you guys watched it yet. It just looks insane. Now, next we had a trailer for Child's Play, a new reboot of the Chucky franchise. Now, the thing with this is, there's you had your last big release, which was Bride of Chucky, I think. Yeah, in like and that 2011, was right? 1998. Was it really that long? Was Bride, of, Bride of Chucky was 98. That was the last biggest release. And then you've had, no, sorry, Seed of Chucky was the last biggest release in 2004. Then you've had two direct-to-DVD ones, which is Curse of the Chucky in 2013 and Cult of Chucky in 2017. Now, they're all done from the same guy, the same one who's at the first... Chucky, everything like that. Now, some production company, I think it's the same company actually, Metro Goldwyn made the first one, they've still maintained the rights for it, so they're, they're doing a reboot. Now, the original creator of it all is not having any of it, neither is Jennifer Tilly, as well as a whole bunch of others from the original ones, aren't supporting this new take. Not only is there a new Child's Play movie coming out, Sci-Fi is also working on a separate TV show as well. And next we have a trailer of the movie called The Curse of La Llorona, which is based on a true story, I think it is, or an urban legend Ish. or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I think it's one of those, more of an urban yeah. legend, but it, yeah, it has some real world um, precedence. And I actually, uh, the trailer for this came out towards the end of last year, and when I went to the cinema in December last year, I saw a poster for a movie called The Curse of the Weeping Woman, which is what it's being marketed to in international markets. Which I assume is because outside of America and South America, where there isn't a large South American demographic, or people Spanish may think, yeah, people may yeah. think that if it's called The Curse of La Llorona, it'll be a foreign film and not in English. So they may have had to change the name to actually get people in the seats. But it's produced by James Wan. No, so the name the name change is that La Llorona is a massive urban legend in the United States. However, it's not known internationally. Yeah, so people right. could say The Curse of La Llorona and we're all going to look at each other and go, what the fuck is a La Llorona? Where you say Curse of the Weeping Woman, you're like, all right, cool. So there's a weeping woman. Like, sweet. Um, next, we had a little TV spot for Captain Marvel, which is only two and a half weeks out too. So it's Yeah, ticket, it was really ready. short. But you saw, I think you saw a little bit more of, of Captain Marvel when she's a bit younger. There was more some, some Yeah, you of, did, yeah. She's a girl. But yeah, it was pretty short. Uh, next, we had a trailer for a movie that no one gives absolutely two shits about. Shut up! I do! Frozen 2. I am no one likes Frozen 2, so we'll mention it, and then we can skip I am right past it. I'm a fuck for a new Frozen movie. Never yeah. watched the original. Go out. I, re the I original, will never watch it. I refuse to watch it. The original is actually really good. No, it's not. Like, it's terrible. Once you once you get past, like... No, no, it is it is actually legitimately good. Kristen well, Bell... Once you get past the uh, big and shit. And it's not shit. You haven't even fucking seen it, dickhead. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Look at the... Ethan's caught a big one. Really, man, Ethan? Really, man? Uh, <laughs> I don't want to get him going too much. But no, right? Frozen 1, like... The only Lucas, reason... Can I, can I just rub my chips to... against you? Then yeah, you sure. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Okay. Cool. Good. <laughs> the only reason... 
The only reason Frozen 1 got the bad rep that it did, or like it kind of rubbed people the wrong way, is because it all... It wasn't even shit! <laughs> <laughs> right now, I'm, right now, I'm just feeding the trolls. Yep. <laughs> next, uh, the next trailer is Tolkien. Yeah. I haven't watched this one yet, but I'm I'm I really I, I I heard about it. And I'm super interested. Nicholas Holt I, is uh, Tolkien. Yeah, that's a really yeah. interesting casting. I mean, he's got an interesting life. I mean, he, he wasn't just like born, wrote a book, died. Like he, you know, he lost his parents yeah, he did fairly a lot. young. Went to boarding schools, met some interesting people, hang out with C.S. Lewis, fought in two world wars. Dude did some shit, you know. Um, next, we had the trailer for Love, Death Plus Robots coming to Netflix what on March fifteenth. That you know, you know, this you looks know, this looks good. Have you ever heard like you know you hear like like a, a good heavy metal song or whatever, and it just starts with like screaming for thirty seconds? That's what this trailer is. It's just screaming at you for thirty seconds, and then you sit back and go, "What the fuck was that?" <laughs> it's like getting hit in the face with a yeah, brick. Yeah, pretty much. It really is. It's just it just starts and goes, oh, and then you finish watching it and you're like, I have to watch that again because I yeah. don't know what the fuck that was. It's pretty. So I totally, I totally you know I'm doing. I'm actually watching this right now, and the live reaction is, what the fuck am I watching? A series right? of short films, it's, but not yeah, in a bad 18 way. Eighteen short films, but not yeah. in a bad no, way. No, you're watching it going, like, this is nuts. It's just this, intense. It's a great trip. I feel like my brain just had like several aneurysms at the same time. <laughs> One of those art styles just looks so good. Yeah, like the art, but not art styles, like it feels like an animatrix type vibe. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. Very much. But like animatrix on drugs. Yeah. So this is from uh, Tim Miller and David Fincher. They see yeah. all this. Oh shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 18, 18 different short films ranging between, I think it was like three minutes to 15, 20 minutes. Each one from like completely different studio, all different art style. They all got to just do whatever they wanted for it. They didn't like restrict them on what they wanted to do for their short film. That's yeah, pretty I bold. I got a bit of a yeah. heavy metal sort of vibe from it too. And I don't know yeah. the music type. Yeah. I mean, the comic book, you know, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know mm. heavy metal. Yeah. Stepping along. Uh, moving on to a thing that I think we can all ignore, and that is let's Disney talk Aladdin about it. Listen, listen, listen. listen. The blue elephant in the room, the Aladdin trailer. We need, so I we mean, need to talk. I didn't know Guy Ritchie was making an Avatar movie, to be honest. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I mean, this look, I watched that trailer without any, um, no, I hadn't heard anything. Nobody had said anything. Like I saw Lucas shared it. And so I went in untainted. It's not like I had people going, oh, that looks terrible. And I watched it. Cause I remember too, originally Lucas's post was like, you know, he was pretty happy with it and i watched it and i double took on that cgi and i just thought wow tell me this is some prototype footage because that just looks fucking um, terrible for me it wasn't that I, I didn't i saw lucas's post so i watched the video then i watched it like at work and it wasn't the cgi that off put me it's just the fact that genie is just will smith he's not different he literally goes woo and then starts talking and that's just typical smith i was it's kind of hard coming off from people who have watched the old one with River Williams, and I've never been a big fan of Aladdin, even that one. I didn't really like it all that much. I haven't watched right. it that much anyway, but I, I'm not conflicted because I like the River Williams ones. I'm just not happy with this because I kind of wanted something that wasn't Will Smith to just be a blue Will Smith. I wanted something more. Realistically, there's only one reason that's going to fail, and it's because people are not going to take Will Smith as the genie. That's and, that's and, all it is. That's look, all it is. Everything else sounds, in this movie has. As horrible as that sounds, at the end of the day, you know, if the masses turn their back on the film because they don't want Will Smith as a genie, well, that's the way it is. You know that that the masses have spoken, and and it doesn't matter if it's right or it's wrong. Uh, they're the ones that are spending their money on film tickets, and if they don't, then that's Disney's loss, and they need to go back to the drawing board. So. You know, at the end yeah, of the day, I'm but, largely indifferent. I won't see. I would never have seen the film at the cinema either way. I have no in particular interest in it. I like the animated film. I still watch it now and again, but I'm not too fussed on any of these remakes, and that's fine. I don't have to watch them. There's no gun at my head. But I'm just saying. I think Disney probably needs to have some chats because, for right or wrong, this film is copying an awful lot of heat. Whether it deserves it or not, it's a completely different subject. But at the moment, it looks like it's in trouble. And if, you know, at the end of the day, if people don't want Will Smith, Blue Fat Genie, it doesn't matter whether they, they're right or wrong. It's going to be a problem. 
is kind of what I'm saying. My own opinion, I thought the CG was a bit flat. Obviously, a lot of other people just go, well, it's not it's not Robin Williams, so I'm not going to do it. Other people thought, well, it's just Will Smith being Will Smith. But for whatever the reason, there's a lot of negative hype built up around this film now. And we've seen what happens to other films that suffer this pre release let's step right. forward moving on we finally got a release window for the irishman which is Martin scorsese's movie he's been doing for netflix which is a budget of 175 million Martin scorsese's highest budget ever and that's because uh they knew the visual effects for robert de niro and um al pacino and joe pesci to make them look 30 years younger at various points in the movie but it should be coming out sometime in october that's as far yes. as we know right now I a lot of am, money on a Netflix film. Yeah. I am so ex Well, originally, I don't think it was a Netflix film, and then Netflix mm. ended up buying the production before it started. Um, but I am crazy excited for this. The cast for it, I don't have the cast list in front of me, but the cast list is insane. It's about a hitman around the 50s in New York who used to work for Jimmy Hoffa. Um, so having the crime element, again, with Scorsese, who's done... You know numerous crime movies that have been excellent like and the cast that he's got around him like this movie is going to be could possibly bag netflix early contender for like best picture oscar next we have uh a banner that got released on some popcorn website that i think may have released it a bit earlier than they should have yeah. as a cross promotion with avengers endgame and uh orville popcorn company in america and um, not long after it was made available, it was quickly taken down. Yes. Yes. So I actually, I funnily enough, actually managed to get a screen grab of this for for us. Yep. It's it's very spoilery for Avengers Endgame. So yeah, it is. I'm sure there'll be I'm sure there'll be a time code somewhere in the um in the comments if you want to skip past yeah. this part. Spoiler, 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 spoiler. Yeah. Well, because the image I got was from the desktop web page and i think yours was from the mobile the mobile yeah so it is slightly slightly different but uh, yeah the aspect ratio is a little bit different on on depending on yeah. what format you were looking at yeah. but um yeah spoiler plenty of spoiler warnings been had it is our first look at professor hulk pretty yep. much in this in the suit holy fuck he looks amazing all right, next we have Ghostbusters star Ernie Hudson has spoken to Jason Reitman about the new film. Oh, please. I hope so. But this, this is like another one that I'm just like, meh. I never really watched yeah. the others. I mean, there was there was no... I, I, I think from that article there was sort of... There's no resolution at this stage, but I guess like early days and there's been some chats. So yeah. you know, fingers crossed. I'd like to see... Uh, you know the surviving ghostbusters you know i mean they appeared in the the reboot i'd like to sort of see them appear in some yeah. capacity in this as well that'd be nice um yeah. next we have the paramount's new thriller called monster problems is going to be filmed here in queensland yeah this is huge so um i got a friend of mine who actually works in the industry she's done a couple of movies um like pretty big movies that have filmed in queensland um one of them wasn't ragnarok but she was really pissed about that anyway um, she actually sent this to me and was like, holy fuck, have you heard about this? For those that know, like, we're kind of like southeast Queen or south, south of Brisbane to a point. Um, they've actually built a massive $12 million studio in Lindham. Uh, sorry, no, in Hemet, um, which isn't really that far outside of the city. It's maybe 10, 15 minutes drive from the city. But it's it's full sound stages, um, sound booths. Um, like, it's it's a full on fucking studio. Like, they, what they have at Warner Brothers Movie World. Fully funded by the Queensland government as well, which is pretty big. Um, Anastasia, the, the Prime Minister, also not Prime Minister, the um, Premier of Queensland, um, actually went over to Hollywood and was pitching Hollywood Productions to come and, and move to Brisbane and, and shoot their films here. And this is the first big one that's going to be shooting in Queensland. Also on the back of this article, um, something that's kind of like was half mentioned in the actual article itself that I thought was really interesting. Preacher season four is actually moving production to Australia and it's going to be filming in Melbourne next month. Yeah. So that's strange. A, that's a pretty big get like Preacher, I, as far as I'm aware, like it's not moving its location in the show to Australia, but I'm assuming they just must be capitalizing on tax breaks. But basically yeah. we're going to have a massive, like pretty big TV show filming in Australia quite regularly. Next, we have Marvel Television and Hulu have partnered up. They will bring four adult animated series based on Marvel characters to Hulu. And those characters are uh, Modoc, 
Hit Monkey, the T- uh, Tigra and Dazzler show, and How the Duck. And then the four shows, once they all air, will then all combine to be called a show called The Offenders. Oh, the boy. Offenders, yep. yep. The Offenders. Um, I think Jordan Blunt and Patton Oswald are doing Modoc, and I think the Tigra and Dazzler show is being handled by Chelsea Handler. I think. Oh, no. <laughs> I was no. waiting for one of you to say that. I don't like her at all. <laughs> she's not funny. Like, uh, she's Amy Schumer levels of funny, which is not very. <laughs> yeah, I mean, none of these, but I mean, I'm not a big fan of any of those characters. I'm more of a traditional, you know, Avengers style kind of guy. So, I mean. Murdoch's I don't, dope. I don't Murdoch have- is Dope. I don't have Hulu or Stan, oh. so... Um, yeah. So, Pat, Pat Nosold and Jordan Blum would do Modoc. Josh Gordon and Will Speck would do Hitmonkey. Erica Rivnosia and Chelsea Handler would do Tigra and Dazzler Show. And Kevin Smith and David Willis would do Hell the Duck. Yeah. Well, next we have some more casting for the Dune remake. This thing just keeps getting... Remake. Oh, this, now, I'm so just going to run off the full cast list for it right now. We've got Timothy Chalamet. Rebecca Ferguson, Dave Batista, Stellan Skarsgård, Charlotte Rampling, uh, Oscar Isaac, and the newer ones are Javier Bardem, Josh Brolin, and Jason Momoa. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know a whole bunch about Dune. I, I only know bits and I'm pieces here. of like, hey, aren't you lucky I'm here then? Yeah, no, I, you, I got a feeling <laughs> you're going to explain it to me anyway. Sure. Um, all I know is that the story of it is very complex to adapt and. I feel uh, well. To be fair, like Frank Frank Herbert was an interesting person, but uh, yeah, the, the reason being is the story itself is pretty deep. It's but it's at the same time it's a bit of a, I mean, I guess these day and age it's a trope or it's a cliche, but it's kind of like you know, young boy becomes the chosen one, saves the world kind of thing. That that's fair that's enough. the overarching story. Like it's it's yeah. Uh, what's interesting here is you got Josh Brolin uh, has been cast as Gurney Halleck, and that's not a huge role, but it's an interesting one. Uh, he's a Atreides. Uh, and then Momoa, is he confirmed? I thought he was just in talks, but... I think nah, he's, he's confirmed, confirmed now. He's confirmed. Yeah. So he's playing Duncan Idaho. Duncan's... Um, uh, again, he's in Atreides, he, so he's one of the good guys, quote-unquote. He is a friend to Paul and a bit of a sort of a, a role model for Paul. Paul looks up to him. Um, but he's also a fairly decent fighter in his own rights. So, um, it's, is that Duncan? Yeah, Duncan. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, no. I mean, I, I don't know. It's it's going to be interesting actually to see people like Josh Brolin in these more secondary roles when they're in scenes with fairly new actors, like the chap playing Paul. I mean, he's not super green, but he's fairly green by comparison. You know, to make sure that, you know, you're going to need... Denis going to need to do some good directing to make sure that they don't overshadow the the primary cast too much. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's sort of like with, you know, when they did Indiana Jones 3, it's like, well, you know, Harrison Ford dominates the screen so much. You need someone with more presence to be his father. Who do you get? Well, shit, it has to be Sean Connery, right? So it's sort of... But if you... if Yeah. So these are secondary roles and these... Two characters, Duncan and Gurney, they serve the Duke and his son. So, you know, they sub- they're submissive to a sense, in a sense. So, it'll be interesting to see how that reflects on screen, I guess. So, next wow. we have an Aquaman spin off based on The Trench, which appears in one part of Aquaman. They're oh, doing a okay, horror so movie cool. based Excellent. on it with, with no characters yeah, from Aquaman yeah. returning just, just to the end. And. Say it with me. One, two, three. Why? Why are they doing that for and not giving us a Flash movie? How about that? Yeah. I mean, right now, DC's slate of upcoming movies is a joke. Going further into the slates of movies they have upcoming, we can take the Joker and Harley Quinn movie off. Yep, that's good. Because this one's been pretty much shelved. Yep, and she's not going to be a No, she is is in Suicide Squad 2. They said again, uh, after the article came out, they said that she will be in it. Okay, so she's not, but then she is, but then she might be, but then in the extended universe. It was just rumors. universe, but in the core universe, but maybe in her own universe, in a sub universe of the extended (laughs) universe. There were rumors that she wasn't going to be in Suicide Squad 2, but then they came out and said that no, she will be. They want pretty much. I think Harley's going to be in one DC movie a year for like 
five years right. or something. But shit. the Lido thing is just gone then, right? Um, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Next, we have the Breaking Bad movie will reportedly reportedly be released on Netflix internationally and AMC for local. Yes, bitch. Yeah. So I'm really good. excited. Yeah. And as well, they've also said, yeah, so it's going to be a direct sequel and it's going to focus on yeah. Jesse. Um, so they said but it could it, end up being split into multiple episodes or aired as a single feature length movie. Here's an idea. Movie. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. I mean, they don't. They like Jesse out of the entire series. If you haven't seen Breaking Bad, too fucking bad. It ended six years ago. Jesse had the most satisfying ending in that show like walt had a good ending in the fact that we don't know if he's dead or not because it wasn't very clear um pretty but like jesse dead. that that last season man jesse went through some fucking shit and he he's really the only one that survived as far as we know everyone else is dead apart from like skylar and walt jr and stuff but out of the principal like bad people or like you know the majority of the cast like jesse was the one that everyone wanted to survive and he did and like we're now getting this film of like what happened after and i don't think well at the same time i don't think we need it i would love to see more because jesse was such an interesting character in the show so i'm really excited for this I, either way like it's gonna be fucking awesome now rounding out to a final bit of news apparently two live action alien series are reportedly in development with ridley scott involved just give me a fucking just finish your movies ridley scott god fucking damn it Hmm. Give me one after Covenant and fucking finish it. That's all I want. Hmm. <sighs> I mean, I'm I'm a big Alien fan, um, Same. but hmm. yeah, I don't know. I honestly think, much like Cameron, Scott needs to let go. I mean, I know he was there at the beginning, uh, you know, and, and both those guys have done some amazing shit. But I think it's it's time to let others play with their toys. Ridley Scott, like. Uh, I get that he was there from since the start, but at the same time, like he's had people like you know we all we've we may have talked about it once the Neil Blomkam alien movie. Yeah, it, um, I think eventually after a while too, you you start yeah. suffering from what I, I like to call as you know Lucas syndrome, you're not and as in you Lucas, but as in George Lucas. Oh, where, I was gonna say, bitch, what no, the fuck? No, like George Lucas, <laughs> where you know Wait, just, this per this personal <laughs> attack. <laughs> same thing with Star Wars, like you know he had to let go. As much as it was his baby, it was time to let go. And I feel the same way about some of these other long-running series of shows, movies, that, you know, the creators need to kind of just let go after a while because they're doing more bad than good. All right, so um, I'd like to quickly just do some spoiler-free uh, Umbrella Academy, if that's all right. I, I think... Have you watched any of it, Lucas? Hell no. Hell no. I actually, I actually plan on it. Uh, it's just It's just been a very... Very, very, very busy couple of yeah, weeks. I, I, I think didn't it went plan it came on to it Netflix at all. last. And it came to Netflix last, last Friday, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah it did. And then I just, I didn't even plan on it. And it was just a case of, I found I had some time. I think it was like Saturday night. So I watched a couple with the wife. And I'm like, that's actually pretty good. And then I watched a bit more Sunday night. And then I finished it this morning. And it was like, that was really good. Um, so I thought, well, I'll do some quick spoiler free. So, you know, you're not going to, I'm not going to ruin anything for you here. Uh, I thought the acting in this uh, series, it's 10 parts, was just fucking amazing. And I don't normally praise something that heavily, but the acting in this was really, really good. Every character, every actor put on a really rock solid job. You know, there's tears, there's anger, there's, um, you know, sadness. There's just this myriad of, of um, emotion and you feel it. It's really, really good stuff. Um, a huge like round of applause for Aiden Gallagher, who's the young man who plays number five. Uh, I thought his performance was just amazing. Like he really shone in this show. Um, this kid is like some sort of savant or something. He's like 14 and is the youngest person to be like a speaker at the United Nations. He's releasing a solo album. He's done producing. He's done all this stuff. Like so, the kid must be some sort of like. Genius. Yeah, savant. Yeah, savant that's thing. crazy. Like he's just, yeah. But you watch him in this thing and he's playing, you know, a 60 year old in the body of a 13 year old and he's just on point. Like he's so good. Um, this is, I'm just reading a quick, I'm reading yeah. a quick bio on him. Oh, By yeah, he's amazing. 18, 
By age eight, he was storyboarding and shooting live action shorts with friends and doing yep. stop motion Lego animations with special effects. By the age of nine, he was asked for getting help on sets to learn directing. Um, and apparently his dad worked in the industry, so he was able to get him like sitting next to actual directors, watching them direct at nine years old. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's just a bit of a Beethoven. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, whatever. Wow. He's just, yeah. He's just a bit of a prodigy. So, uh, yeah, you will really enjoy his performance in this. It's, it's good. Uh, story's good. Uh, it, you know, it probably didn't overstay its, its welcome. Like 13 episodes might've been a bit much. So 10 was pretty good. Maybe could have gone to eight, but moves well uh i think there's a couple of things that might upset comic book puritans but then that's kind of inevitable with all of these things um there was a few little changes there was one or two sort of bigger changes um the ending was largely predictable i hadn't read the comic book series so i still went in oblivious but you will guess it if you have read it if you haven't read it and if you have well then you kind of got an idea what's happening anyway but um yeah like this was great and i'm i'm hoping that you know we get a second season pretty quickly and i think it's gonna rate real well i mean this was better than most of the the marvel stuff that i've seen on netflix like it was it was really good it was surprisingly good so i really hope we see more it was yeah watch it just just do it <laughs> yeah right one Imagine of the best a- netflix things i've seen in a while yeah I'm just looking at the casting and like I mean I knew Ellen Page and Robert Sheenan were in it who are both excellent but I didn't realize Mary J Blige was in it who's the other one Peter Outerbridge I didn't realize yeah. he was in it they're not all here looks like he's a recurring there's not a lot of big names in it like this apart from Ellen there's not a lot of massive names in it but yeah I mean even even Hazel and Cha Cha like the people that played those characters you know again just very believable great acting like and because everybody's acting was just on point which is probably testimony to also to some really good directing. It just made the whole thing very enjoyable. Um, and there's yeah. some great scenes that are just very comic book panel like as well, which was great. And uh, yeah, yeah, just just, just from just, reading just like, watching stuff, I can imagine that a lot of these could translate the screen very well. Yeah, currently sitting at an 8.5 out of 10 on IMDb with 7,607 reviews. So that's that's pretty damn good. Uh, yeah i've i mean everyone that i know that has seen it has really enjoyed it so like that's i'm, I'm eventually going to get to a round to watch it I, I know the missus is super keen to watch it because she's read the comic books and she said the comic book was great so um yeah it's just a matter of finding that time to sit down and dedicate 10 hours to it so yeah yeah yep but yeah i think i i would be i think it'd be hard pushed to find someone that didn't really enjoy it because it is it is so well done anyway that's all I'm going to give you for that. Um, let's move on to our topic of conversation, being uh, oversaturation of comic book slash superhero movies and TV shows. Uh, I guess um, I will sort of preface here a little bit by saying um, that I personally enjoy these films, but at the same time, I can understand where some of the comments are coming from, where you know they are definitely dominating a lot of real estate at the cinema. But uh, the flip of that being, if we look at what happened to the video game industry, where you know we now have a dozen big AAA releases every year, what we see now is just an enormous volume of more smaller games released digitally uh, every week, and some of those are absolutely amazing. And I think what we're going to see as you know the world changes is those AAA titles will still hit the cinema. But what we're going to see is amazing content, but it's going to hit that streaming service and maybe not so much the cinema. And I think it's just the way we consume things that's going to change. And hopefully as a result, we don't lose quality uh, films that, uh, you know, may have sort of gotten drowned out a little bit at the cinema. Hopefully they can shine, uh, you know, on the home streaming service. So before I sort of hand over for your two cents, I'm just going to, I'm going to hit you with sort of three quotes from famous people uh, that sort of are going against the idea of more of these sorts of films. And then I'll turn it over to, to, to Luke. Well, I should probably go to Ethan first because I think Lucas is just going to be a frothing, you know, raging pit bull. So <laughs> save Lucas to last. All right. So James Cameron, director. Here we go. Groans. I'm hoping we'll start getting Avenger fatigue here pretty soon. Not that I don't love the movies, it's just, come on guys, there are other stories to tell besides hypergonodal males without families doing death-defying things for two hours and wrecking cities in the process. 
Jodie Foster, actor, studios making bad content in order to appeal the masses and shareholders is like fracking. You get the best return right now, but you don't, but you wreck the earth. It's ruining the viewing habits of, Ameri of the American population and then ultimately the rest of the world. I don't want to make $200 million movies about superheroes. And lastly, Mr. Mark Hamill, who we all know as Luke Skywalker, I don't know what's going on with superhero movies. They're fantastic, but I think we're reaching a point of oversaturation. So that's why my why the story is so important. It's that the gimmicks and all that, uh, they can only take you so far. That's what I want, better stories. All right, what's your thoughts, Ethan? I, I get the mean how there is an oversaturation. There's so many coming out, but when you look at newer ones coming out when you've got like Umbrella Academy, you've got The Boys coming out later this year. Um, Netflix has commissioned another one. I can't remember what it's called. And we've got streaming services snapping up. Almost yeah. any comic book the, license the they're going to hold on. Streaming services are uh, ones that I, I feel like break the sort of mold for what we see in cinema. Mm -hmm. So what we get on TV and streaming services are a bit different to what we see in cinema. Cinema, of course, are big blockbusters. We've got big budgets, big stars, all that sort of stuff. The ones we have for streaming services and TV are smaller and I feel a bit more, I don't know, a bit more gritty, but more, I don't know, they, 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 they have more of a sort of individual feel to them than others that are out there, if you, if you get what I mean. Mm -hmm. There's definitely there's a lot of them out there, it's just, I feel like, yeah, there's oversaturation, it doesn't seem like it's going to be dying down any soon, to be honest, unless the cancellation of three of the five netflix shows is anything to go by but i don't know just wait and see there's a lot out there. there's a lot coming up soon a lot of different ones that'll be i mean you have ones like let's say deadly class that's one that's come out recently that's not a superhero show it's a comic book show but it's not a superhero show it doesn't fo focus on anyone that has powers you look at kick-ass when that came out didn't have anyone with powers and it still did reasonably well but it didn't do exceptionally well Punisher doesn't have powers. Punisher doesn't have powers, <laughs> but he's tied to a universe that does, where Kick-Ass didn't, so that helps to... And he got exposition in another show as well, so that helped him off with that. Alright. Um, yeah. Should we take the leash off? Yeah, go ahead. Alright. Three, two, one. Go. go. So, who was the, so who was the first quote? Uh, James Cameron. Fuck James Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, who was who was the second quote? <laughs> Jodie Foster. Fuck Jodie Foster. Who, sorry, who was the third quote? Mark, Mark Hamill. Hamill. We love Mark Hamill. <laughs> okay, so oh. this is this is where this conversation gets really interesting, right? Had we of continued to get superhero movies like we did in two thousand and three with like. Daredevil and and the A Punisher movie shit. that pu Punisher movie had we have continued that trend into today and we had the oversaturation quote unquote right of comic book superhero movies however the fuck you want to call it you know dominating then yeah of course there would be there would be reason to shit on the genre hundred percent however look at what Marvel has done since Iron Man. Right? We've had political thrillers, we've had big space epics, we've had small little stories, literally, with Ant-Man. Marvel has revolutionized the game when it comes to telling a superhero movie, because it's not just a superhero movie. DC still have to learn that lesson, DC is still telling superhero stories, argue about quality all you want, at its core they're still superhero movies, whereas Marvel are telling all these other stories black panther for example that was more of like a global political statement in a way i just feel that like the the idea of shitting on comic books and superheroes has been a constant for the last 30 40 50 years right because comic books are still seen in a way as for kids so adults are going. That, isn't that kind of what Bill Mayer preaches on his late? Oh show? fuck him! <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, he, I, you, I know I'm going to get beeped here, but the <laughs> took it way too far the moment he invoked <laughs> in Lee, man. Like fuck him, he, and like I don't know if you saw Kevin Smith's response, but Kevin Smith's response was basically fuck you. Like it was a big fuck you to Bill Mayer. Like 
shitting on shitting on Stan Lee, right? For creating comic, well, not creating comic books. Comic books were already a thing, but like creating a new wave of being able to tell fiction, like a, a you know, working to popularize. That's exact. That's what I was trying to say. Uh, popularizing a new way to to take in fiction, right? It's a, it's kind of forgotten that comic books were sent to people that were on the front lines of war that rather than just reading a novel or reading a book or something like that, reading a magazine, they would read a comic book. It would take them out of the war, even if it was for 15 minutes. Comic books are still kind of, like I said, seen as a medium for kids because, you know, what adult reads a comic book? And that's kind of still how the movies are being treated. Not as these, and as well, like people like Jodie Foster, she can go on and say that, you know, this movie has a big $200 million budget, but it has no fun, you know, has no, has no story. I mean, realistically, look at Endgame. I'm uh, not Endgame, sorry, look at Infinity War. Like, Infinity War told, what, four or five different stories and interwove them all together seamlessly. That's better than the majority of Jodie Foster's films and TV shows that she's directed. <laughs> you know, what's the last big thing you could say that you remember seeing of Jodie Foster that told a story that good? Elysium. Uh, the Hannibal Lecter thing with Anthony Hopkins. Yeah, um, but that, that was going to be my point. Was going to be, I haven't seen Elysium. I heard it was shit, so I never watched it. But it wasn't that good. It was okay. It was okay. Yeah. It wasn't that good. But like realistically, you know what? What was the la- you know what was the last big thing you heard Judy Foster doing that wasn't that episode of Black Mirror? Yeah, you know. Um, I mean, I don't mind Judy some- Foster personally. I think she's a pretty good actress. Good actress. Don't get me wrong. But like, her <laughs> making it's, com- it's interesting. I think most of these negative making- comments to are, are geared at Marvel to be specific too. Like. You know, you weren't oh, seeing because, comments like this when, you know, Batman Begins and Dark Knight were hitting the cinemas. Uh, it's probably because Marvel passed on Jodie Roster for a role and now she's salty. <laughs> and, I, that's, and funnily enough, that was actually going to be my comment about James yeah. Cameron. Chances are... What's he the wants the direct name? one. Yeah, Mar- yeah, he's been wanting to get his teeth into a superhero movie for so long that, you know, he's, he's basically grown salty at the idea that he'll never get one, so now he's going to shit on Well, superhero. there's also, like, another big director that's um, been talking shit as well. That's you Bolt. Oh, no, fuck I mean, nobody yeah. listens to are we gonna, are we gonna Are we gonna put you bowl in the same fucking no. hemisphere? No, no, no just as James shit Cameron and Jody Foster. This is I the guy that created what, Postal. Yeah. Which actually and wasn't that bad. Right. To me, that was the best of the lot. But uh, I, was like, I, guess, I guess what the concern is for some people is that uh, these films are, hu- are huge and they have enormous budgets and they also have a massive marketing budget. And I guess there's some fear that regardless of how good or bad these films are, they're drowning out uh, films on other subjects and other topics. Do you, do you feel there's any sort of validity to that claim? I will give you one example that will show you that that is not, not the case. Marvel's been going since... Two, Marvel's cinematic universe has been going since 2008, right? We're at 20... 21, 22. 20, 20, Mar- Captain Marvel will be the 21st. So technically we have 20 films in the franchise. In the 10 years that that universe has been running, how many have been nominated for Best Picture? One. Yep, exactly. Right. It, the, 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 the argument that they're drowning out other films is fucking ridiculous. All they are is popcorn movies. We've so had, do you, do you think then it's just, movies, it's just jealousy had, that, you know, we've oh, got 100%. this art house, art house film, we've got these big name actors, we've got this this incredible script, uh, and then, you know, the we, we get whatever it is, a million people line up for our film, and then there's 10 million people lining up for the Marvel film with their popcorn. And, and do you think, so there's just some, some jealousy there at this success? You know, you know what it is? It's Marvel's the biggest dog in the game right now. So... Take a shot at them. There have been tentpole movies, big tentpole studio movies for years and years and years and years and years. Guess what? Those movies have drowned out the, you know, 15 grand to make, you know, Clerks. Like, you know, I think True Lies or like, you know, it was like a big movie like that would have drowned out Clerks quite easily because mm. guess what? Clerks it's was interesting because, I mean, no one's directing this at, say, the Star Wars films. And yet if a Star Wars film has got a, you know, a street date, you know, other films will move their release date so that there's no clash there. Um, yeah. You know, but nobody's really said, hey, look, you know, we're sick of, you know, lightsabers and uh, Gungans. You know what I mean? Like, it's it seems to be this this this, this negativity is 
directed very specifically at comic book superhero stuff and probably largely at Marvel. Yeah. Again, it's it's to me, it's two things. It's attacking Marvel, who are the biggest dog in the fight right now. It's quite easy to shit on them. It would be, and again, it would be it would be easier to shit on them had they been making movies like Incredible Hulk and Iron Man two today. But mm. they're not. They're actually making films that are they've they've grown infinite, infinitely better in quality. Yeah. Had you have said had Jodie Foster not shit on Marvel and a shit on DC, I think we'd have be having a different discussion. But I think it's her direct targeting of Marvel, who Marvel have been putting out good quality films. Um, they've been reviewed by critics very well. They've been reviewed by audiences very well. I think it's just she's put a little too much salt in her coffee. Right. And I think and I think it's just that's all it is. James Cameron, you know, and in saying that, James Cameron, right? So I think since what are the last what are the last two movies he's done? It's Avatar um, and Titanic, right? Pretty much. Yeah. It takes 10 years to do a movie, so. Yeah. And, like, in in the time it's taken him to come from Avatar to Avatar 2, Marvel have released 20 films. Or and, not and even 20 broken, films. Like, maybe not eight, 18 films. Records, and, I think. and are getting close to breaking his records. And I think, you know, because he made $2.5 billion in 2009. Which I think now is about four billion dollars, three billion, right. three and a half billion dollars, or something. Um, Avengers One came very close to breaking that. Like it was, it was only like a eight eight hundred million or something off breaking his record. Right. And I think he's realizing it's a legitimate threat. But in saying that, though, like James Cameron has kind of, I think James Cameron has kind of lost the plot. He's yeah, well, I mean, I think so, so, I mean, he's, he's, a lot of his so, films kind of sort of, I mean, they're not comic book or superhero, but they do follow similar tropes. Yeah, I, I think, again, I think it's the, the big thing here is that comic books are still seen as the kid thing. Yeah, and the, I, I, what, I think we're growing what, out of what, it. What's, what, no, I don't think we ever will, if I'm being honest. As we're getting, we're getting into an age now where people are kind of coming to understand how important comic book, or how important comic books are to pop culture as a whole had you have gone back 15 years ago right we were still in a day where like i said they were making movies like the ben affleck daredevil and the the punisher movie and and well and you go back further to the 80s and you're looking at blade you three know, and stuff hulk and you're looking at uh, wonder woman and uh you know greatest american yeah, hero and, the, and very campy sort of versions, stuff you know and and it was always was say, those were super campy they were they were because i, I guess I think, you know, too, one way or another, we, we should definitely be enjoying this period, um, you know, because things do come and go. And, you know, I've always been a, a big fan of sort of fantasy. And, and again, fantasy in the 80s was big, but it was largely camp. And then when Lord of the Rings came out, I was sort of rubbing my hands together because I'm like, well, hopefully we start seeing fantasy being taken seriously and we get some good quality stuff. And we got a few good pieces. And I kind of see comic books as the same way where, you know, you're saying it's kids, but I'm also saying it, it, it in itself is sort of come of age a bit where we've moved beyond the camp and we've moved beyond the low budget. Uh, and DC did a lot of that groundwork, but Marvel just took it to the next level. And, uh, yeah, Marvel were yeah. able to capitalize on it. Absolutely. And I think, you know, we should enjoy it while we can. I, I Will it go on forever? I mean, I'm sure Marvel will going to continue making their films, but eventually their w fatigue will set in. It's inevitable. Uh, I know Marvel will work damn hard to, against that, and, and they'll, but at, at some point, the, the, the roller coaster will end. And, you know, it, I think superheroes will sort of, and comic book films will, will, will fall back into the shadows a little bit. And then 20 years time, you know, you know, when you guys are in your forties or, you know, whatever, there'll be another resurgence, you know, and, and I think that's sort of how cinema tends to go, you know, genres fade in and out. Yeah. I can't remember who it was, but there was actually a really, it was a really good quote that I, I'm, I'm actually struggling to remember the full quote, so I'm not going to say it, but it had something to do with like westerns will never die and, and i think much might have, <laughs> and i not well they're not but they, like but they'll come back they'll always come yeah back. like there's always a rotation like you'll you know yeah. you'll find every 15 20 years the yeah. thing that wasn't hot you know recently yeah. like it yeah. becomes hot again you know there was a push in the late 80 you know in the late 2000s right with obviously x-men and fantastic four and all that um to, to 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 make superhero movies and even though it kind of like it took a while for it to get there. It eventually got there. 
Western movies, Western movies is kind of the same thing. Like we had that big initial push in the 40, you know, 40s and 50s and 60s, right? And then, hey, look what happened. Like other types of movies started to come in. Science fiction. To a, to a point, fantasy, like you had stuff like Never Ending Story and uh, what's it called? I can't think. No, for me, it was the Conan films and, and things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And then recently, like even as, as late as 2012, 2013 we had Django Unchained we had The Revenant we had like a lot of even though The Revenant wasn't really a western movie it was more set around that time hmm. um you know you, you'll start to see those things kind of come back and whoever who said back in the day that there was an oversaturation of western movies I don't know I imagine somebody probably did yeah, yes, back, back when you had the serials and it was black and white and, and sequin shirts and all that I'm sure there was some people that just sort of said look I'm sick of seeing this shit on the, the idiot box I'm sure there was. Yeah. You know. But, but the thing is too, I think part of the the other reason is, you know, with with the success of comic book movies and why I think you're going to have when if you if you know, whether you enjoy them or not, you're going to have to wait a while longer is, you know, Hollywood's always looking for uh, you know, like a mining company, any any new resource that can tap into and with the recent successes from DC and then Marvel, you know, uh, are now looking, you know, for anything they can get their claws into and that's why we're seeing not necessarily series that were worse by any stretch of them, but just smaller, you know, smaller houses, you know, Dark Horse and, and things like that are getting picked up and, and independent comic books are getting picked up. And Hollywood's just mining the shit out of these comic books now. And I guess the good thing for those that are enjoying these films and series is we're going to see a lot more really neat, interesting stuff. And, you know, perhaps stuff that's a little bit off the beaten track, nor art house or noir or whatever have you, but still based in a sort of a off a comic book sort of series. So it's and it will evolve, it will change. I think I think too, you know, we we've got the Marvel stuff, but uh, you know, I think sort of like musical tastes, you know, I I can imagine I can see these sort of comic book stories splitting up a little bit diversifying a little bit and and people sort of starting to enjoy subgenres, you know and and uh you know i can i can imagine that especially once you start getting a volume of content out there you people do start you know um creating these subgenres, and i think we'll probably see that before uh things quieten down uh in regards to these types of films all i really want is my emery wars that's all i want just give me my fucking emery wars series or movie or whatever it ends up being there's like there's so much that they can mine from comic books, like you were saying. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, they know, will. I, and as well, I'm, I'm, I'm still waiting for stuff like Saga, you know, and Why the Last Man, which is coming very soon. Yeah, um, there's lots of you really know, cool stuff. I, I doubt there's going to be an oversaturation. Like, there's an oversaturation to a point, but like you said, comic books as well are so diverse that not everything, not everything that's comic book is a superhero. I think what we're really talking about here is we need Cable and Deadpool on HBO. Oh, God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Well, actually, it'll, it'll go to Hulu because Disney. Yeah, yeah. But, but it needs to, it I, get needs what you, I, I get what you mean. But yeah, yeah. Um, you know, for example, right? A couple of comic books I can name off the top of my head. Walking Dead. Where's the superheroes in that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's it's um, normal people in an un, you know an a non normal situation. Yeah, and and yeah. guess what? Guess what? Had they adapted that from a book, I feel that would be much better reviewed. Possibly. You get what I mean? Yeah. And that that and that goes back to my comparison of comic books being treated like they're children's. Yeah. Things you know had even even though you've got things like the Max series and whatever have you that are you know explicitly and only sold to you know over whatever it is fifteen or over eighteen. Are you talking uh, about Maximum Run? No, the Max series, Marvel Max, for instance. Oh, of course, yeah, of course, yeah, like the, the adult yeah, the series of comic books. And I mean, I, I had a comic book store and I was bringing in, um, you know, but it was very early days too, like the Yowie stuff, like the you know the adult hentai, but yep. like gay and and this stuff. Like we were bringing in some pretty. Uh, and like customs were stopping this stuff back then too like it was still yeah <laughs> socially taboo but i mean like um yeah so there's definitely to say that it's childish i think is a bit of a, a weak argument um it, look sure let's say in the 50s in the you know the golden age was it primarily aimed at children i, I would have to say yes it probably was but i don't think that's very true of comic books today at all um you know 
uh, they deal with some pretty dark subject matter, some very mature subject. And I think too, like music, they help children, like, well, I don't want to say children, that's the wrong way, but they certainly help teenagers going through, you know, a lot of emotional crap, uh, where they can sort of relate to, you know, characters and their, and problems they're going through. So, you know, just, um, just like any piece of fiction, exactly, you know, exactly. but in a more digestible chunk. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, it's pretty, pretty pictures and stuff, but yeah, I guess what I mean in the sense, I guess what I mean in the sense of like it being treated like a child's thing is that you know for the longest time it's seen as yeah seventy like years the ago, com- com- maybe yeah and, and that and that but that mentality is also continued you know and it's now like comic books are taking being taken more seriously and it's like really like you read like even I'll talk to my friends and they'll be like really you read comic books and it's like yeah I fucking read comic books like hell yeah oh my god you still read novels didn't you read them at school only you know it's just it's it's dumb shit like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah exactly. Anyway, man, I we could go on. I, I could go watch. Around. I still watch Peppa Pig. God damn it! If you think that's kitty, fight me. What the fuck? Yeah. So Ethan went to go pee because we were just rambling on for so long, and he come back to Peppa Pig. Yeah. There is there is nothing wrong with Peppa Pig. Have you seen the Daddy, picture of right. Daddy? Have you seen the, Daddy Pig is like the man. Have okay. you seen the? Have you seen the picture of Peppa Pig where it's like Peppa yes. Pig from the left, Peppa Pig from the right, Peppa Pig front on? It All is right. horrific. I have nightmares. We, we need to we need to wrap that up now, and uh, I have an enormous amount of editing to do. Yay! Yay! Thank you very much for joining <laughs> us so- this fortnight. Hopefully, uh, we kept you entertained, and uh, uh, hopefully, next fortnight we'll have uh, some more interesting news. Hopefully, so uh, we might even have someone who's seen Battle Angel or Leader by then. Uh, otherwise, um, I don't think. Uh, and I kept the Marvels out just after our next one. Yes. Yep. So we will, we, we'll, 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 but we should maybe, I don't even know if we get another trailer. Will we get another trailer, do you think? Probably not, no. We, probably not. We'll get we, TV spots. No, but we'll get a, it. yeah, we'll get a TV spot. We may get like a final trailer because Marvel, Marvel's normally pretty good. They'll do a final trailer like two weeks out. So we might get one in the next couple of days, but that's right. depending if they feel like yeah, it. Well, but so next podcast would, will probably just be Lucas screaming uncontrollably for an hour and a half out of excitement. Yes. That sounds accurate. <laughs> um, but I'm sure we'll have some interesting tidbits. And um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll find an interesting topic of conversation. But thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, thank you very much to our Patreon supporters to help keep this channel on the, the SoundCloud Premium service. Very much appreciate it. Um, we will be back next fortnight. And we hope you'll consider joining us then. Bum, 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 bum,